Glenn Ford, a name synonymous with charisma, talent, and cinematic brilliance. Annie to take her business right around the corner because I am through, I am finished. Captured the hearts of audiences worldwide with his fascinating performances. But behind the dazzling appearance of fame lay a series of events covered in uncertainty and speculation, leading to his demise. What terrifying truths lay concealed within the life and career of Glenn Ford? Join us as we unravel facts about Glenn Ford's death that still scare us today. From Canadian beginnings to Hollywood stardom, the famous actor Glenn Ford, originally named Gwilin Samuel Newton Ford, was born in St. Christine d'Auvergne, Quebec, Canada. His father, a prominent figure in the railroad industry, boasted a lineage intertwined with Canadian and American political legacies. Despite the harsh Canadian winters, Ford's life was not greatly affected. His father found a career opportunity in California, leading the family to set sail for the sunny shores of Santa Monica. It was here that his journey into the world of acting truly began. Glenn's passion for performing ignited during his high school years. He passionately participated in school plays, honing his acting skills and captivating audiences with his talent. This early exposure to the stage sparked a desire within him to pursue acting as a career. After graduating from high school, Glenn wasted no time delving deeper into the world of theater. He joined a traveling theater company called West Coast, where he had the opportunity to showcase his acting skills in various productions. This experience allowed Glenn to refine his craft and laid the foundation for his future success in the entertainment industry. In 1939, Glenn Ford's journey to stardom began when he caught the eye of Tom Moore, a talent scout for 20th Century Fox. Moore recognized Ford's potential and helped him secure a contract with Columbia Pictures that same year. This marked a significant shift in Columbia's approach to talent management. At that time, Columbia Pictures, under the leadership of Harry Cohn, had a unique strategy. Cohn observed the struggles faced by other major studios, like Warner Brothers, with their contract stars. He saw an opportunity to capitalize on this by positioning Columbia as a solution for unruly stars from other studios. Essentially, Columbia served as a penalty box for actors who caused trouble, such as demanding high salaries or refusing to work. Cohn, known for his shrewdness, recognized the potential of utilizing these loaned-out stars for Columbia's productions. Despite initially hesitating to develop a stable of contract stars, Cohn eventually relented in the late 1930s. He began by adding Rosalind Russell to the roster, and then signed Glenn Ford and fellow newcomer William Holden. This strategic move elevated Columbia's status in the film industry during the 1930s. Despite challenges, including not being able to afford top-tier talent initially. Cohn's calculated decisions paid off, contributing to Columbia's growth and success in Hollywood. Cohn thought that Glenn Ford and William Holden could swap roles if one caused problems. Even though they often auditioned for the same roles, Ford and Holden became close pals. Their careers followed similar paths in the 1940s until Holden skyrocketed to fame in the 1950s, especially with his collaborations with director Billy Wilder. Ford's first big appearance was in Fox's Heaven with a Barbed Wire Fence in 1939. He kept busy with several small roles in different movies during the 1940s. Although his first roles were modest, they marked the beginning of his growing career. Like many newcomers, this early experience helped Ford learn about the filmmaking, understand how sets work, and build connections in the industry. The course of Glenn Ford's life was about to change dramatically once again as the shadow of war loomed large. He made a bold move by joining the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve, signaling a deeper commitment to the war effort. It was during this time that he crossed paths with Eleanor Powell, sparking a passionate romance that mirrored the ups and downs of his career. Ford's sudden decision to enlist while filming Destroyer shocked those around him, leading to an unexpected engagement to Powell. She made a heartfelt promise to stand by his side, even if it meant giving up her acting career. This period of upheaval marked a significant turning point in Ford's life, ushering in a period of profound change and growth. In the structured environment of the Marine Corps in San Diego, Ford found a sense of purpose and friendship that he had been missing in the glamour of Hollywood. Despite being offered immediate officer status, Ford opted to earn his promotions through his efforts eventually rising to the rank of sergeant. At the same time, his colleague William Holden enlisted in the Army Air Corps, both actors putting their growing careers on hold for the war effort. Amidst the uncertainty of the times, Ford and Holden struggled with doubts about their future in the entertainment industry, contemplating the sacrifices they might have to make for their beliefs. 
As Glenn Ford faced the challenges of this difficult time, his personal life was filled with the excitement of impending fatherhood. However, his joy was overshadowed by a sudden health problem. Ford was diagnosed with duodenal ulcers, forcing him into an extended stay in the hospital. This unexpected illness not only put a halt to his acting career, but also dashed his hopes of serving in the military. Despite his eagerness to serve, Ford's military duties were limited to domestic tasks, and he was eventually discharged from service due to his medical condition, without ever seeing combat. Nevertheless, his efforts were recognized with military honors, providing some solace amidst his unfulfilled dreams, starring in Gilda and Global Dam. After the war, Glenn Ford's acting career took a fortunate turn. In 1946, Ford truly stood out. The movie Gilda propelled him to fame, earning him recognition and praise that would shape his legacy. In this iconic film, Ford starred alongside Rita Hayworth, and their on-screen chemistry lit up the screen. Playing the rugged and complex character Johnny Farrell, Ford demonstrated his talent for portraying deep emotions, capturing the complexities of love, deceit, and intrigue. Gilda not only made Glenn Ford a Hollywood star, but also confirmed his status as a leading man who could effortlessly charm audiences with his presence and acting. What made Ford's career stand out was his incredible versatility, allowing him to smoothly switch between various movie genres. This not only highlighted his acting skills, but also showed his ability to connect with viewers across different types of stories. During the 1950s, Glenn Ford frequently played characters that embodied classic American manliness. He portrayed tough, self-reliant men who stood firm for their beliefs. Often, he took on the roles of heroes or rebels who challenged authority and fought for what was right. These performances struck a chord with viewers, contributing to Ford's rise as one of the era's most beloved actors. As the 60s unfolded, Glenn Ford's career shifted. He moved into supporting roles in both movies and television. While he remained active in the industry, the parts he landed were not as prominent as those he had enjoyed in the 1950s. Yet, amidst the shift in his career, Glenn Ford delivered several noteworthy performances. One standout moment occurred in the 1963 movie, The Courtship of Eddie's Father. Here, he depicted a widowed father navigating the challenges of raising his son on his own. Ford's portrayal of the grieving father, grappling with his emotions while trying to bond with his child, captivated audiences and garnered critical acclaim. His performance even earned him a Golden Globe nomination, highlighting his ability to convey deep emotions on screen. Ford's talent in dramas was evident in roles where he portrayed characters dealing with intense emotions and tough moral choices, like a troubled teacher in Blackboard Jungle, 1955. Ford also displayed a great sense of timing and a natural talent for humor. His roles in films like Don't Go Near the Water in 1957 showed his ability to make people laugh while still being relatable and genuine on screen. His comedic performances showcased his adaptability as an actor, allowing him to connect with audiences on different emotional levels. Moreover, Ford's venture into Western movies was crucial to his legacy. His portrayal of complex and rugged characters in films like 310 to Yuma, 1957, revealed his love for the genre and established him as an actor who could shine in various cinematic settings. Ford's talent and commitment to acting were acknowledged through nominations and awards, affirming his impact on the film industry. In 1961, he was nominated for a Golden Globe for his role in Pocketful of Miracles, directed by Frank Capra. This nomination highlighted his ability to excel in comedic parts as the film showcased Ford's humor and charm. Playing a kind-hearted gangster in a funny setting further showed his versatility as an actor, capable of captivating audiences in light-hearted stories. Glenn Ford's journey in movies was filled with diverse and interesting characters, revealing his remarkable range as an actor. Just in 1956, he took on roles that explored a wide range of emotions and experiences, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. In The Fastest Gun Alive, he demonstrated his talent in yet another memorable performance. Ford fully embodied the role of George Temple, a gunslinger turned reformed man trying to leave his past behind, yet constantly reminded of it. This character allowed Ford to explore the complexities of someone battling with their history and personal challenges. The movie's themes of identity, redemption, and fresh beginnings provided Ford with an opportunity to deliver a performance that balanced action-packed scenes with the emotional struggles of a man seeking redemption. Meanwhile, 
Ford also took on the role of Captain Fisby in Tea House of the August Moon in 1956, a character distinct from his previous portrayal, showcasing his versatility as an actor. In the comedic movie set after World War II in Okinawa, Ford showed his skill in handling humor within cultural contexts. Playing Frisbee, a military officer with good intentions trying to introduce democracy to a small village, Ford displayed his comedic timing and knack for bringing out the nuances of character-driven comedy. Through this role, Ford went beyond the usual genre expectations, bringing a sense of lightheartedness to his already impressive range of performances. Ford also graced the screens of blockbuster movies, securing roles in high-budget productions. Notably, he appeared in the 1978 superhero flick Superman. Uh, good evening, Officer Mooney. Well, they say confession's good for the soul. Portraying the character of Lois Lane's father. Additionally, he featured in the 1976 war epic Midway, depicting the character of a naval officer, the romantic journey of Glenn Ford. In 1943, Ford tied the knot with Eleanor Powell, a famous actress and dancer known for her impressive tap dance performances in movies during that era. Their union was blessed with a son named Peter Ford, born in 1945, who later followed in his parents' footsteps and pursued a career in acting, although he has since retired from the profession. Despite Powell's fame and success, it was rumored that Ford was not as celebrated as his wife. However, Powell made significant sacrifices to be with him. Unfortunately, Ford didn't reciprocate her loyalty and commitment. Instead, he was known for his pursuits of other women, which Powell reportedly discovered multiple times. Despite being aware of his actions, Powell chose to remain silent, but her patience wore thin over time. It wasn't until 16 years later when their son turned 14 that Powell decided to take action. In 1959, she filed for divorce, citing adultery and mental cruelty as the reasons for ending their marriage. She endured the marriage mainly because of her son. She held on, wanting to ensure that Ford wouldn't have any advantage in court. That's why she waited until Peter reached the age of 14 before taking any action. Ford continued his pattern of pursuing romantic relationships with women. Seven years after his divorce from Powell, he got married again, this time to actress Kay Piper, also known as Catherine Hayes, on March 27, 1906. She was famous for her role as Kim Hughes on the long-running CBS soap opera As the World Turns from 1972 to 2010. Unfortunately, their marriage only lasted for three years before they decided to divorce on June 26, 1969. They didn't have any children together. Before getting married, they dated for a year, starting in 1965. Kay Piper became the second woman Ford married and subsequently divorced. After his second marriage ended, Ford entered his third marriage with Cynthia Hayward in 1977. However, after seven years, their relationship encountered challenges leading Hayward to file for divorce in 1984 due to irreconcilable differences. The couple did not have any children together. Later, Ford married Jean Baus on May 5, 1993, after reportedly dating for a year since they met in 1992. Initially, reports suggested their marriage only lasted for two months, but other sources indicated they divorced in 1994 after nine months. Despite their short-lived union, it was evident that Ford had a preference for younger women, as Baus was significantly younger than him, marrying him at the age of 77. Baus was Ford's fourth and final wife, making him quite prolific in his romantic pursuits, which included dating, one-night stands, and flings with various women. Unlike Baus, who had a known history with other men before and after her marriage to Ford, there is little information available about the other women in Ford's life. Glenn Ford's Affairs and Co-Star Connections In addition to his marriages, Glenn Ford engaged in romantic relationships with several well-known women. In Peter Glenn Ford's 2011 book titled Glenn Ford, A Life, Peter disclosed that his father had romantic relationships with 146 actresses. One of his most notable affairs was with the renowned actress Bette Davis. Their passionate love story unfolded during the filming of the 1940s movie A Stolen Life. Their chemistry on screen was undeniable, and it spilled over into their off-screen lives creating a deep, emotional bond. Despite both being married to other people at the time, their shared love for acting and the glamorous Hollywood lifestyle brought them closer together. Although their time together was relatively short, their connection left a lasting impression in the records of Hollywood history. Alongside her illustrious career, Davis was known for her unstable love life, 
which included four marriages and numerous romantic affairs. Her relationships were as compelling as her performances, adding another layer of intrigue to her enduring legacy. Connie Stevens and Glenn Ford sparked a fiery romance after teaming up on the set of the 1962 movie The Courtship of Eddie's Father. Their shared passion for acting initially drew them together. Despite the constant attention from the public and the media, they managed to keep their connection strong for several years. Although their love eventually faded, they remained close friends and respected colleagues throughout their lives. Connie Stevens is a multifaceted talent in the entertainment world, excelling as a singer, actress, and businesswoman. She gained widespread fame for her role in the hit TV show Hawaiian Eye, launching her into the spotlight. Connie's remarkable career has spanned decades, earning her acclaim for her compelling performances in both serious and comedic roles. In addition to her involvement with Glenn Ford, she was married twice, including a highly publicized union with actor Eddie Fisher. Ford and Judy Garland had known each other in Hollywood for many years before they started their romantic involvement in 1963. Their relationship, according to most reports, was intense but didn't last long. They were together for about six months before they parted ways. At the end of their romance, Garland wrote Ford a heartfelt breakup letter, which later became public knowledge. The letter, spanning two pages, was written on personalized stationery with Garland's initials. Penned in green ballpoint ink, it began with Garland expressing her feelings of confusion and distress. She wrote about her sorrow upon realizing that Ford's love for her had faded. Additionally, she mentioned a bouquet Ford had sent her, perhaps as a farewell gesture. In 1960, Maria Schell and Ford starred together in the movie Cimarron. While filming in various locations, they had a passionate relationship. Ford's son, Peter, later wrote about this romantic involvement in his 2011 biography. Even after their affair ended, Shell gifted Ford a dachshund puppy in 1981, which he named Bismarck, providing him with constant comfort, especially during his later years when his health declined and he became bedridden. When Bismarck passed away, Ford had him cremated. He requested that Bismarck's ashes be buried alongside him upon his death. In 2006, when Ford passed away, his wish was fulfilled and Bismarck's ashes were laid to rest with him. In 1952, Ford and Geraldine Brooks appeared together in the movie The Green Glove, a French-American collaboration. Despite being married to other people, they developed a romantic bond while working together on set. When they weren't filming, Ford and Brooks enjoyed exploring new places together. Their connection seemed genuine, but once filming ended, their relationship hit a rough patch and eventually ended. Ford was reportedly devastated by the breakup, to the point where he considered joining the French Foreign Legion as a way to deal with his heartache. Stella Stevens and Ford shared the screen in three movies, The Courtship of Eddie's Father, 1963, Advance to the Rear, 1964, and Rage, 1966. During their time working together, they had an on-and-off romantic relationship. Despite their chemistry on screen and their close bond offset, their relationship never became deeply serious. On the other hand, Eva Gabor and Ford's affair began while filming Don't Go Near the Water in 1957. They were involved on and off between their marriages, and at one point, they nearly tied the knot in the early 1970s. Their last film together was It Started With a Kiss in 1959. After her divorce in 1983, Gabor was romantically linked to TV producer Merv Griffin until her passing. Rumors suggest their relationship was platonic, and possibly a cover for Griffin's rumored homosexuality. Peter Ford's book reveals that while filming the 1953 movie The Big Heat, Glenn and Gloria Graham maintained a strictly professional relationship. However, when they were cast together again in the 1954 film Human Desire, their connection turned romantic. Although details about their relationship remained scarce, it's evident that they had great on-screen chemistry in both films. During their affair, Ford was still married to Eleanor Powell, while Graham was single after divorcing her second husband, director and actor Nicholas Ray, in 1952. After her brief involvement with Ford, Graham married filmmaker Cy Howard in 1954. The Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford story. Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford crossed paths before they were famous. However, it was their roles as passionate lovers in the 1946 film Gilda that sparked a deep and enduring love between them. Their relationship lasted over four decades, despite the challenges they faced. The iconic film, Gilda, earned Rita the title of Hollywood's love goddess, while Glenn affectionately referred to her as the love of his life. Although they adored each other, 
they struggled to maintain a traditional, exclusive relationship. Their paths never led them to marriage because one or the other was always wedded to someone else. Despite this, their bond remained special to both of them, enduring through the years. Rita, originally named Margarita Carmen Cancino from Brooklyn, New York, had five marriages in her lifetime, including unions with Prince Ali Khan, singer Dick Hames, and Orson Welles. Glenn, on the other hand, was born in Canada, but his family relocated to the United States when he was very young. He was rumored to have been involved with famous women, including Rita Hayworth, yet none of them captured his heart like Rita did. Despite his numerous flings and affairs, his love for Rita never waned. His deep affection for her was evident in various surprising ways. In 1960, he bought a property next to Rita's Beverly Hills home, which she shared with her husband, screenwriter James Hill. Supposedly, Rita informed Glenn about the available property, perhaps hinting at something more. Glenn took the opportunity to build his dream home right next to hers. The day after completing his new house and moving in, Rita filed for divorce. And just like that, the couple with an on-again, off-again relationship found themselves back together. Glenn even installed a small gate at the back of his property so Rita could easily come over whenever she wanted. They spent almost every moment together, basking in the sun and lounging by Glenn's pool. In 1972, Rita told reporters that Glenn was the best neighbor a woman could have, reflecting their strong emotional bond. For Glenn, Gilda was more than just a movie. It was his favorite, the one that catapulted him to stardom. Any film featuring Rita was also among his favorites. In a 1990 documentary about Rita Hayworth, Glenn expressed his deep love for her, a feeling that never faded, even after she was diagnosed with early-onset Alzheimer's in 1981. Glenn remained devoted to Rita, helping her as much as he could during her illness, and even serving as one of the pallbearers at her funeral in 1987. He was fiercely protective of her, and considered her one of his closest allies. Losing her was undoubtedly one of the toughest challenges he faced, but her memory undoubtedly lived on in his heart and mind. According to Peter Ford's book, the romantic relationship between Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford endured for four decades. Health struggles and personal reflections. In the latter years of his life, Glenn Ford faced declining health. Throughout the 1990s, he endured a series of strokes, which severely affected his well-being. Despite these trials, Ford chose to remain in his Beverly Hills home, finding solace in the familiar and preferring the privacy it offered. As his health declined, Ford's public appearances became less frequent. Nevertheless, he retained his sharp wit and warm personality, endearing himself to those around him. His son, Peter Ford, fondly recalls spending quiet moments with his father, cherishing the precious time they had together. In his final years, Ford's loved ones respected his wish for privacy, shielding him from the public eye as he battled his health issues. Peter Ford, Glenn Ford's son, disclosed that his father struggled with alcohol abuse, worsening his health condition. Despite his mother's persistent efforts to assist him in overcoming this habit, Glenn Ford remained unwilling to address it. On August 30, 2006, at the age of 90, Ford passed away in his Beverly Hills residence. The cause of death was reported to be a cerebrovascular infarction, a type of stroke that occurs when blood flow to a part of the brain is blocked or reduced, resulting in the death of brain tissue. Strokes are common among older adults and can be triggered by various health conditions, such as hypertension and heart disease. Due to previous strokes, Ford's body was already weakened, making it difficult to recover from subsequent events. Each stroke had taken a toll on his health over time, making the impact of each new one more severe. Despite the efforts of his caregivers and medical treatments, the last stroke proved too much for his body to overcome. Following his passing, Glenn Ford was cremated as per his wishes. A private ceremony was held for his family and close friends to celebrate his life. The gathering was kept intimate, allowing those closest to him to mourn and remember him in their way. Ford's death deeply affected his family, friends, and fans who admired both his acting career and his personal qualities. He was fondly remembered for his contributions to cinema and his warm character. Unveiling Glenn Ford's Hidden Secrets Following Ford's passing, an outpouring of tributes flooded in, with numerous co-stars and friends expressing heartfelt remembrances. Yet the revelations didn't end there. Shortly after Ford's demise, long-hidden secrets began to surface, and surprisingly, they emerged from an unexpected quarter, his son, Peter. In the days preceding Ford's death, he had candidly shared his life stories with his son, leaving no detail unspoken. Peter revealed that Glenn and Hayworth's affair stirred up quite a storm for them. 
When they finished filming Gilda, they harbored a terrible secret. This time, Hayworth found herself expecting a child. Their affair had already put their careers in danger once, and they were not prepared to face the consequences again. Faced with a heart-wrenching dilemma, Ford and Hayworth made a decision that tore them apart. Fresh from her divorce from Orson Welles, Hayworth couldn't endure another scandal. She discreetly traveled to France for an abortion, while Ford returned to his wife and family. Shortly after, Hayworth bid farewell to her acting career, opting for a troubled marriage with Prince Ali Khan. While this secret was deeply sorrowful, it wasn't the most shocking revelation from Peter Ford. During his initial affair with Hayworth, Ford feared the exposure of their affair, leading him to extreme measures for self-protection. Remarkably, he obtained a recording device and started tapping his own wife's phone to monitor her conversations. What started as a precaution soon evolved into an unsettling obsession. Ford proceeded to record every phone conversation he had for the next four decades. These recordings included talks with numerous celebrity lovers and well-known pals like Frank Sinatra, John Wayne, Cary Grant, Lucille Ball, and Jane Stewart, among others. The list seemed endless, but that's not all. Ford also preserved taped discussions he had with two sitting presidents, Ronald Reagan, an old friend from Hollywood, and Richard Nixon, who later became infamous for his secret recordings. Nobody had a clue about Ford's secret activities until his son stumbled upon the tapes after his demise. However, tapes weren't the only items he hoarded. Ford's Beverly Hills estate served as the ultimate bachelor pad, housing an abundance of relics, perhaps too much. In 2018, Peter Ford auctioned off some of his father's belongings, and one particular item stole the spotlight, a couch. According to Ford, his father had seduced Marilyn Monroe on that very couch 46 years earlier. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.